So let me introduce you for anybody who's not familiar. Okay. Uh, Jeanette sculpts women, wildlife, and masks from clay. She is inspired by images that she sees in real life, in museums, and galleries, and in nature. Once an image lodges in her mind, she often mulls it over for a period of time before she materializes it in her studio. This process of mental mulling keeps her endlessly amused. I love the concept of mental mulling <laughs> as an artistic practice. So, I mean, that sort of introduces the, the concept, but what is, you know, what does that process look like for you? Well, I um, had the good fortune of reading a book that I think changed my life uh, a number of years ago called The Artist's Way. And it's uh, by Julia Cameron. And she made the recommendation that uh, started me on this mental mulling of journaling. And she recommended in order to find your artist's way, which, you know, at the time I had not been introduced to clay. I was kind of looking for my creative outlook. I started this practice of journaling three pages a day in a spiral notebook. And I've done that now for three decades. Wow. And it's kind of, it's kind of like talking to someone who really listens to you because, um, you know, they're, it's just you and the piece of paper. So I, I do that every morning when I'm waking up with my cup of coffee and I find it really, um, I'll come up with concepts I, hope, I don't think I would have thought of otherwise. So that's been a really wonderful practice. You're really reminding me, um, you know, when this whole process of quarantine started in March, a friend of mine, you know, a lot of us were sharing this article um, from the astronaut. Have you seen this? I, I can't remember if it was Kelly or not, but basically it was how they kept sane in space. Oh. And one of the things was to journal every day. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I have not been as good at that as I've wanted to be over the last six months, but it is something I've been trying to remember. And when I do do it, it makes a big difference. You know, it's like just taking that time to, you know, get the things in your head, out of your head is such a great exercise if you can adhere to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you know, if that's where the mental mulling begins, um, how is that then extrapolated into work you know how are you taking those components and um and i'm sorry oh, my phone it. just went off i turned it off but how are you taking those things and putting them into your work you know from the journaling process to the creation of of art well i um you know a lot of times i talk about things that i've seen that have made an impression on me and i developed them and I've started sketching. I'm not really, you know, I'm a sculptor. I'm not really a painter or drawer, so I don't draw very well, but I love sketching and I will come up with an idea and then I'll draw it. And then sometimes I go back through my journals and I just page through and look at the drawings. And I'll find that something that really intrigues me, I'm drawing it in my journal. I'm drawing it on the back of envelopes. I'm, you know, I'm just sketching it to keep it in my mind. And then it develops into uh, a piece of sculpture. And when you're saying like things that you've seen that then end up, you know, appearing in these other places, what sorts of things are you carrying around with you? Like, what are these things that you're seeing that are resonating with you? Um, you know, a lot of times there are things that are in maybe the Crocker Art Museum or I'm out somewhere and I see a statue or sometimes I just see a person and something about them strikes me. But um, a good example, I was in Hawaii with a friend and we went to the Waikoloa Hilton and they had these 14th century wooden statues of Bodhisattva. And I mean, they just made the hair stand up on my neck and I photographed them. And I sculpted uh, Bodhisattva for probably close to two years, did several versions of that because the look on this woman's face of compassion and the ancient quality of them just really um, made an impression on me. And I had to make my version of it. And I made a number of versions of it. And so it was a real spark. 
It's interesting you mentioned compassion. So are you, you know, when you're thinking about the things that you're conveying through these pieces, are there, you know, emotions or things like that that are compelling you when you're thinking about this content? I mean, what sorts of, what are you conveying, I suppose? I mean, what is it that, you know, because a lot of us find different things that are sort of the vehicle through which we're telling a story or having a dialogue. Right. So, you know, what is it that you're hoping to convey through this? Well, I think uh, compassion is a large part of what I try to convey because the women that I make um, all have sort of a smile, not a full smile, but a suggestion of a smile. And they have a sense of serenity about them. And I think some of that, um, probably a large part of that comes from my childhood when I was, I was raised in the Catholic Church and exposed to all these um, statues of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints. And they were sort of similar to the sculpture that I make, usually standing kind of straight and looking uh, with this look of compassion. And I find that coming out, you know, I know a lot of artists who do figure sculpture use photographs and they try to recreate a, a, very, a person's face. And um, my goal is to have a face come out of the clay. So I, you know, I have some basic, there are some basic outlines for how you sculpt. You know, you have the midline and the eyes are a certain level in that. But I like to just let the facial features emerge as I sculpt. And, and I usually end up with that expression of compassion. It's interesting that you're, you know, that women are a recurring theme here as opposed to, you know, I don't know how to put this, like it's, um, you know, that women are the vessel for that compassion for you, I think is interesting, you know, mm -hmm. that, that that's, I mean, I, I, in some ways I find like, I feel like I can understand why that would be, but you know, you don't want to, um, I don't know, you don't want to necessarily generalize either, but I think about, you know, society and, and even just some of the conversations we're having right now and like the need for compassion and who are the people who can facilitate those right. needs, you know? Um, but uh, anyway, I'm kind of digressing. Um, so I'm curious. Yeah, well, I think you're thinking that there are men who are compassionate as well. And for some, and I'm not sure why I don't feel drawn to um, sculpting men. I think maybe um, the human figure is so complicated. And even just to try to do my best with conveying women is enough for me. And so to try to wrap my head around the male um, features is it just something that I haven't explored. It, it's not as appealing to me and I'm not sure why, but I don't question a lot of this stuff. I kind of go with what my gut tells me to do. Yeah, which you kind of have to, um, mm -hmm. or you do have to. I mean, you're the, you're, you know, you're making it for yourself, you know, it has right. to, it has to compel you. Um, and I'm curious, so, you know, everybody has had these different answers for how COVID has affected their practice in the interviews that we've been conducting. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it's things that are fairly straightforward in terms of who they can encounter or not. You know, it's a lot about isolation. And in some cases, you know, there's been artists who have not even necessarily because of isolation, but they just, this su sudden break in our lives has caused them to go in a different direction with their work completely. Um, and so, and so in some cases they couldn't even totally explain why. And so I'm curious if you've had any noteworthy impacts on your work from, from, from the pandemic. Time. Yeah. You know, I, um, I guess the short answer would be, I'm not as affected as a lot of people. I'm lucky in that I'm retired and I'm an introvert. And so <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is open the door to my studio and walk down two steps and I'm in another world. So uh, I stay connected to people mostly by telephone um, or sometimes I social distance like a happy hour or something on a patio. But um, I'm, I'm pretty happy in my studio and talking to people on the phone. It hasn't affected me 
that way. And um, I feel fortunate because my real career was as a nurse. And if I was still oh. working, I was an emergency room nurse practitioner, I would be in the thick of things. So I'm very grateful. I can't um, say that the pandemic is touching me as severely as it is other people. It's interesting though that you say that you were a nurse because you know relating it back to the conversation that we started earlier about compassion and a desire to convey compassion through work. I mean you spent your career doing something that is entirely reliant on compassion. Right. I think that's true and in fact um, part of the reason a large part of the reason that I got into sculpting was that I needed something to replenish me because I gave a lot at work and I had a very difficult job and I was looking for a creative outlet where I could just um, explore and be myself and give back to myself part of that replenishing um, process that we all need to do. And some of us need it more than others, you know, based right. on trying times or trying lives and stuff like that. Well, in an emergency room, especially, you know, you have this need for not just compassion, but also to be able to sort of roll with the punches because you never know what's mm. going to come through that door. And the people that you're engaging with are really reliant on your ability to empathize with them. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting, you know, now knowing this thing that you did, you know, that your what your career was, it is interesting that you have you know, found this direction for your work that is such a compliment, I think, to, you know, that concept, you know, I just think that's right. interesting. And also, I, you know, when quarantine first started, I saw people joking, like, you know, introverts, this is their time to come alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, this is fine. Yeah, you don't have to make time. excuses to stay home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just makes it seem like you're very careful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's so conscientious about the virus. Um, well, and I'm curious, so as people, um, before we run out of time, I've been wanting to make sure that everybody, especially because of the pandemic, they know how to seek out your work. Um, so have you set up a shop, Shopify account or any of those sorts of things so that people can? Um, I haven't done that, but I am a, one of the artists at Art House at 10th and R. Oh, good. I have a share, yeah, I have a shared studio there, and we were closed for several months, but we're now open on second Saturdays um, with all these parameters in place. They have a door monitor, and they only allow a certain number of people in wearing masks, and we can have a certain number of people walk through the studio that I'm in. So I have a, um, a fair amount of my work there, and uh, people can also make appointments, and I can meet them there. Oh, that's great. That's super good. And then you also, I saw that you have a directory page on the Sack Open Studios website. So that's cool too. Yeah. Um, and that has all your contact information if somebody wants to get in touch with you and, and learn more about your work. Right, right. Those are both good ways. Excellent. Well, this has been so great. I've enjoyed all of the conversations that I've had over the last week and a half because I've gotten to know not just more about work and artists that I've seen on the tour in the years past, but also just, you know, I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated by the different dimensions of people's personal lives and how it informs the work they make and mm -hmm. just how art happens. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, one of my motivating forces in life. So um, all these conversations have just been so interesting and it's been really great talking to you today. Yeah, same here. Thanks so much for the interview, Liv. Yeah. Well, great. And are you going to go live this afternoon? I am not going live this afternoon. <laughs> and I, I heard uh, Frankie's uh, saying she's technologically challenged. You know, I think I'm in that age group that is that way. But at any rate, I really appreciate all the opportunities, though, that Verge has given us. I've been really impressed. I've done this Open Studios two years prior, you know, the last two years. And uh, boy, you people really pulled out all the stops to make this an interesting and exciting event. So glad we could do it. And thank you so much for participating. So yeah, you're welcome. Well, cool. Thanks a lot, Jeanette. Um, okay. Thanks. Nice talking to you, Liv.